All right, in this one, we are going to uh, be sort of styling a different blog layout. One of the, the kind of cool things about CSS Grid is that it's it's good for application and, and layout, but it's also good for just laying out text on, on a page. So this is what we have here um, where we've got some headings, we've got some paragraph tags, and then we have these things I like to call tips where you can put them to the right or to the left. Um, they've got some quotes and some images that sort of spill out. I like to call this sort of full bleed. It goes all the way past where, where the text might be. Um, and you can put stuff to the left and to the right and, and some bigger images. So um, let's jump into it. Let's take a quick look at what we've got here in the HTML. We'll go to full bleed blog start. And we've got an article, the class of post. And then inside of that, we just have like normal HTML that might be spit out by like a WordPress or any other CMS that uh, that you might have. The only like interesting thing is that we have these div with a class of tip and it could be anything with a class of tip actually, but I'd like to put a paragraph tag inside of it. So I use the div um, and then tip and tip right or tip left and they will go across. And then we also have figures with images and fig captions. Uh, to the bottom of that. So we'll open up the full bleed here. And this is sort of what it looks like by default. I've just styled the, the text to be uh, specific black and uh, some italics on the H1. So the way it's going to work is that we are going to take the post and make it a grid. And then we're going to make it into three columns. And that most of the content is going to take up the center column. That's what this text is going to be. And then occasionally things like images are going to uh, span themselves all three across. So, so we'll go ahead and grab our post and we'll display grid right on that specific post. Let's also open up our dev tools here and turn on the grid dev tools uh, for what we have. I'm going to put a max width of 1000 PX on the container and then I'm going to center it. I'm going to put 200 pixels on top and bottom and auto. We're going to center it. There we go. Looking pretty good. Now we're going to split this up into three columns. And if we look at what we got here, it's uh, split up into, they're not perfectly uh, columns as I like to annoy people who like things perfectly centered. Uh, but we have a bit of a column here. You've got your main column here and then a bit of one here. And the way that I sort of did it initially was uh, I said grid template column. And I was like, maybe the first one will be 15%. And the second one will be 60%. And then the third one will be 25%. And we'll give that a save. And that will work pretty well. Uh, the problem comes when you start to add grid gap where you want to have 20 PX. Now all of a sudden we're over budget. And if we start to resize this thing to be a little bit smaller than 1,000 pixels, we start to get this dreaded horizontal scroll. And, and why is that? Well, the reason behind that is because we are adding up to 100% and then we're adding grid gap of 20 PX and grid gap works just like margin where it will add to it. It will not take away from these values. So what we want to do is actually switch these over to FR units. Um, and I sort of just thought, oh, these are all kind of base five. So 15% uh, could really just be three FR. And these things are just proportional so I can do whatever I want. That will be 12 FR. And this would be five FR. And then everything will add up regardless of how much grid gap I actually end up adding. Um, I'm actually going to add a grid gap of 10 PX and then 50 PX. So it's going to be um, it's going to be 50 in between each of them. But the gap in between each of the rows is only going to be 10. Good. Now I've got this problem here where every single paragraph or every single element is now taking up a spot. So what I really want to do is uh, select all of the, the elements and put them in the center column uh, that we're looking for here. Let's go down here and grab the post and grab every single item that is a direct child of our actual grid. And we'll say grid column. We're going to start at two and we're going to span one. And that should put them all in the actual center column. So that's looking a lot better. Alternatively, what you can also do is you could say two and then end two from the end. And that's the exact same thing. I think I might even prefer that. And that will just say don't end right here, but end right here. And if I were to ever add another column of like four FR, um, that will then span. See, so now it will span the two and leave this extra tip because really I just want these two gutters on the left and the right. And then I want all of the content to take up whatever is in between. So I like this sort of anchoring it off the end there instead of assuming that it's always going to be one. 
So we've got all of our uh, items working here. Let's uh, let's start working with some of these figures here. So if we were to find one of them, this is a figure. I want it to span all the way across. So I'm going to say post figure. And let's first take the margin off of it, get rid of that. And then I'm going to make it span all the way across. So I'll say grid column one, negative one. And that will make it span all the way across and get this nice, super wide image. Uh, I'll also grab the fig caption, just make that font size 10, make it look nice and small. You could also, if, if these images are loading slowly for you, it seems my internet's a little bit slow right now, you could just save them locally and then they'll, they'll load nice and quick. All right, let's go uh, on next to these block quotes that we've got here. So we've got, if we inspect them, let's see, we have these block quotes and I want them to span all the way across as well. So say post block quote. I also want them to span the same as the figure tag. And there, there we go. And then we also want to bump up the font size on each of those. So say font size 60, font style, text line center, and margin zero. Beautiful, looking good. Now we've got these tips here, which need to go on to the left or to the right. And what they should do is they should just go into the actual gutter of what it, like right if it was left it should go right here and if it was right it should go here so let's first grab those tips so the tip and the background let's just do fa 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 good and we'll add some padding 10 px to that now how do we get it to go to the left or to the right so let's do the uh right ones first so dot tip actually let's just do whatever this one is let's see left so tip dash left we want to say grid column. We want to start at one and go for one, right? Because we want to start right here and go just for one space wide. And now you see what happens is it will put it in the gutter. And because this is now an open space and we have asked that our paragraph tags go in that space, uh, the browser will say, oh, that's a that's an empty space. Don't mind if I do. I'll go ahead and use that myself. So on the left, we'll also do text align right, and we'll say border dash right, 2px solid yellow. Looking good. Now let's find another one of these tips that goes on the right-hand side. I think there is one. Here we go. The song is by Levi the Poet. So we'll grab tip right. grid column and in this case we want it to span one but end at the last column and then that will anchor it to the right hand side and then we can take the it's kind of the same idea but put the border on the left hand side beautiful and I think we had one more this one had an image in it and it seems to automatically be styling itself. Um, one thing that is kind of kind of weird with this is because if one of these is really high, like let's search for band camp and put like a whole bunch of text in there, you'll notice that it will it'll sort of force this to have a lot of empty space. And that's sort of just how grid works. Um, but one thing you could do is if you're if you know that you're not going to have a bunch of tips one after another, you could also make these tips um, span a couple rows each. So we'll take the post. So we'll take a tip and any tip will have a grid row and we'll just say span so like span three. And what that will do is it will it will span three high. In this case, it's still not looking all that great. So uh, I don't know, you could span even more than that. Um, but it still is going to force the, the height. And, and if there is not enough space, um, it will simply just uh, keep the text working well. So here it looks pretty good with the with the exception of the fact that uh, it's really, really high, but that's easy to fix because we can just say something like align self start. And then that will that will only go as high as it actually needs to instead of stretching high. So that's a bit of a that's an OK solution. I'm not totally sold on that, but uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, in my case there, you could also probably absolute position them uh, if you know that they're not going to 
overlap each other. So we've got our uh, quotes going all the way across. We got our images going all the way across. We've got our tips going in the left and the right. And then we have all of our sort of main reading content going down this main column here. And this is this is a layout that I really like because anytime that you you want to be able to have just a bit of a different reading experience, there's no need to put in all these extra elements and all these extra um, divs and wrap it around or or even if you have something like WordPress and you were to tell the client, make sure you wrap this in a div, <laughs> they're not going to be able to necessarily do that. So having CSS grid um, and being able to span it across whenever it is that you need to sort of default all of the text is in the middle column. But if you want to span something across or you want to stick something in the gutter, it's pretty simple to do that. So hopefully you enjoyed that one. 